Hi, welcome to the new video series on the workbook exercises to go along with Syntax of Generative Introduction. My name is Andrew Carney and I'm the author of the textbook. Okay, now we're going to draw some verb phrases. Um, you'll maybe want to review the verb phrase rule in the textbook before we start. I'm going to draw all the trees from the top to the bottom. You could draw the trees the other way if you like. Um, that's entirely up to you. Same basic principles. And this verb phrase starts with the verb shredded. So I've got the verb shredded. Okay, now let's look at what else goes on here. What are all the things that modify the verb shred? We have the direct object carrots. And then we also have this long prepositional phrase with the big brass belt buckle. Now, you have to be careful here because with the big brass belt buckle could in fact modify two things. It could modify carrots. So that the carrots that are wearing the big brass uh, belt buckle or it could modify shredded. The easier interpretation here, the one that we're going to use, is that whoever was doing the shredding was using the belt buckle to shred the carrots, rather than the carrots actually had a um, brass belt buckle on them. Uh, but the other interpretation would be possible. If it's the case that with the big brass belt buckle is modifying shredded, then that prepositional phrase has to be a sister to shredded. So let's put in our bits here under the verb phrase. We have the noun phrase, the carrots, which has a determiner and a noun, the carrots. And then uh, we have this big prepositional phrase. I'll give myself a little bit of room to work here. Headed by with. Um, now what follows with is this noun phrase, the big brass belt buckle. So we have a determiner, the, and let's think about big and brass. Big and brass um, separately modify belt buckle, right? So the brass isn't big, but the belt buckle is big. And the brass um, modifies belt buckle alone. So we're going to need two adjective phrase um, structures here. We have one here. And we have another one here. The first one is big, and the second one is brass. And then finally we have our head noun, belt buckle. And there we have our verb phrase, shredded the carrots with the big brass belt buckle. Okay, let's move on to another one often reads trashy novels in the bath. Let's think about what modifies the head verb. Here's our head verb. Often is an adverb modifying um, reads. Trashy novels is the direct object of reads. And in the bath is a prepositional phrase which also modifies reads. It tells you where the reading is happening. In principle, this um, verb phrase is ambiguous. So it could be that the reader only looks at trashy novels that happen to be in the bath. In that case, bath would be modifying novels. Um, but that's not the interpretation we're going to use here. If we did do that, then in the bath would attach to novels rather than the verb read. So we're not going to do that, though. So let's draw the tree for um, the interpretation I've given here. We have a verb phrase, which starts off with an adverb phrase, often. Then we have the head verb, reads. Then we have the direct, novel, the direct uh, object noun phrase, trashy novels. Trashy novels has an adjective phrase, an adjective, trashy and a head noun, novels. And then we have the prepositional phrase, which modifies reads 
in, and then a noun phrase, the bath. Now, some of you are going to be um, really tempted to always attach elements as low down in the tree as you want. So, you know, you, you might be really tempted to attach this prepositional phrase in this position underneath the noun phrase. And that would, in fact, be a legitimate place to attach it, but that would imply that the novels were in the bath rather than the reading happened in the bath. So just be aware of which interpretation you're using. One good practice here is to always indicate a paraphrase to indicate what interpretation you have when you have an ambiguous phrase or sentence. Let's um, see the contrasting case here uh, where this prepositional phrase by Tolstoy actually is attached low so because it modifies novels. It doesn't modify reads. Um, so that's a, a complete contrast to the previous example where the prepositional phrase modified the verb rather than the noun phrase. So let's, um, let's draw this verb phrase. It starts off the same way. We have a verb phrase. We have an adverb phrase, which is uh, frequently. We have the head verb, reads. And we have the noun phrase, eloquent novels by Tolstoy. So we have an ad adjective phrase adjective eloquent. We have the head noun novels. We have this prepositional phrase which hangs off here um, for by Tolstoy. The prepositional phrase is headed by by and then we have the noun phrase Tolstoy. Compare these two trees, this one and this one. In this case, the prepositional phrase is a sister to the verb. In this case, in the second case, the prepositional phrase is a sister to the head noun. This gives us our two different possible interpretation points for these prepositions. Okay, let's now move on. Read a trashy novel by Tolstoy in the bath yesterday. Oh, this one's fun. Here we have quite a number of modifiers. We have the um, a head verb read. We have the direct object trashy novel. Um, in this case we're going to assume again that by Tolstoy modifies trashy novel. Um, we have in the bath which we are going to assume modifies read. And we have yesterday. Now yesterday is an adverb and we're going to attach it in as modifying the verb read. It might actually um, modify the TP a structure which would be equally okay, but we haven't done TPs yet. So with that in mind, I'm going to just erase all these lines and we will start drawing our verb phrase. So the verb phrase is headed by the verb read. We have the direct object which is I got a determiner, so it's got an adjective phrase. Trashy. It has the head noun novel. And because this is the same structure as we had in the previous tree, this prepositional phrase hangs off here by Tolstoy. Okay, in the bath, we've argued, modifies read doesn't modify novel. So some people are going to be tempted to draw it in here, modifying Tolstoy, or in, or in here, modifying a novel. Those would both be incorrect. You want to make sure that um, it's drawn in, a, in such a way that it's attached to read. So we have this prepositional phrase hanging off here so that it's sister to the verb. And that is headed by in, and then we have our noun phrase, uh, the bath.
And finally, we have our adverb phrase over here. Yesterday. Again, you want this to be a sister to the verb because it modifies the verb.